Hey, good evening, everyone. Lieutenant Colonel Allen West here, and I just want to thank you for once again, every two weeks, taking some time out of your very busy schedules for me to share thoughts, perspectives, and insights here at this Facebook Live event that we uh, do. And I just want to say that today, uh, two weeks from today, rather, uh, we will be in our new home. And for those of you that would like to know, uh, Angela decided on a house in Garland, Texas. So we close on it on uh, Tuesday, the 5th of March. I was over there today doing a walkthrough, taking some measurements and uh, doing some things with our general contractor. Uh, she's happy. She has uh, made all her painting decisions and flooring decisions. So uh, we'll be moving out of Dallas uh, from the Lake Highlands area over to Garland, Texas. And so the next time you see us for Facebook Live, you'll probably see a little different uh, setup and venue. And as you can see, looking at the walls back there, everything's been taken down. And you can even see a, a box uh, back there because we've got everything all boxed up. Hey, I always want to thank our website administrator, Marie, and our support team that keeps everything up and running here. I want to thank all of you folks that are part of our special operations and discussion group. Uh, those teams, you do a great thing getting that word out and continue to share and talk about these issues that we present. And that's what I want to try to do is to spread knowledge and get everyone up to speed because, you know, we can only be successful if we arm ourselves up here first and foremost and we prepare ourselves in our heart to go out and do battle for these great United States of America. Also, uh, if you have not had the opportunity to hold Texas, hold the nation, victory or death is doing very well. Uh, we got some more autographed copies that you know you will be able to uh, pick up from Brown Books Publishing Group. They're right here out of Dallas, Texas. And uh, just so you know, we're setting up some uh, book tours. You know, we're going to go back to my home state of Georgia, and also there's a big uh, demand for in Mississippi. And a dear friend of mine is going to have me back down to Lafayette, Louisiana. Absolutely. Eat me some boudin and some jambalaya. So I'm looking forward to coming back down to Lafayette, Louisiana, and we'll let you know about all of those dates. Hey, if you're here in the Dallas-Fort uh, Worth area, March the 16th, we're going to do a freedom ride. We're going to leave from Strokers, Dallas, that Saturday morning. We're going to head up to the home of the artillery, Fort Sill, Oklahoma. All of us red legs know everything about Fort Sill. And while when we get up to Fort Sill, we're going to tour the Fort Sill Museum, and then we're going to have a nice little lunch or a nice uh, burger joint, and then we'll get on the road and come back down to Dallas, and we'll end up back at Stroker's uh, Bike Shop. So please come out and join us. Now, tomorrow, I'll be flying to Jackson, Mississippi. So folks that are there in Jackson, Mississippi, I'll be up there in the capital area. I'll be uh, conducting a, a rally and meeting with some legislators there to talk about the Article 5 Convention of the States because we have to reestablish that sense of federalism. And the Founding Fathers' Rebellion in putting Article 5 in the Constitution, I know there are a lot of fear mongering out there, but George Soros only wanted to support the Article 5 Convention of States when he thought that he could use it to overturn the Citizens United case. When he finally read the Constitution and did his research and understood that he couldn't do it and that this could be used by states to get our federal government in the right and proper uh, lanes as far as understanding their enumerated powers. He doesn't want to be a part of the Article 5 Convention of States. So I'll be speaking with uh, some of the state Senate and state House uh, legislators there, as long, along with the Lieutenant Governor. So if you're down around the uh, state capitol in Jackson, Mississippi on Thursday, I look forward to seeing you. And tomorrow night, Wednesday night, I'll be somewhere eating some really good catfish down there in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, don't tell my wife that I'm eating fried catfish. Please don't tell her. But anyhow, let's uh, talk about what's going on here in our country. And I've been sharing a couple of uh, posts with you, and I think that these are some things that you should really be alerted to. You know, President Trump has decided that, well, no one has stepped up to the plate and secured our border in quite some years. And we're talking about a sequence of you know, presidents being a Republican and Democrat that have failed to do this ever since Ronald Reagan in 1986. You know, we allowed all of those people to have the amnesty, one to two million, and now it's grown to, well, we don't even know, 15, 20 million. We have uh, thousands coming across every single day. It's become a crisis, not a manufactured crisis. You talk to the Border Patrol agents, you get a real understanding of what is happening at our border. But what was interesting to me is the response from the progressive socialist left about President Trump declaring a national emergency. 
I remember when President Obama stood there giving a State of the Union address and he talked about, well, I have a pen, I have a phone, and I'm going to do whatever I want. And the people that call themselves Democrats in that chamber stood and clapped and cheered because he said, I have a pen and I have a phone. He was talking about implementing his own ideological agenda, nothing to do with the state of emergency in the country. As a matter of fact, Barack Obama also said that we had a crisis at the border, but he did nothing about it. So finally, we have a president that's doing something about it. And now, once again, the progressive socialist left is an apoplectic meltdown number 2,754. I'm losing count. But an interesting thing was said by Nancy Pelosi last week, and she said this, and you can go back and you can Google search it and doing her uh, official uh, press conference as the Speaker of the House. She said that we should be careful because if we have a Democrat president, well, guess what they can do? They can declare a national emergency on gun violence. They can declare a national emergency on income inequality. They can declare a national emergency on, well, access to health care, climate change. So in other words, a Democrat president will be nothing more than a dictator and will use national emergencies to supersede the Constitution of the United States of America. When you're talking about all of a sudden using a pen and a phone to declare a national emergency to say that, well, you know what? Because there was a shooting somewhere, we're, we're, we're just going to write it out. You can't have these type of firearms. We're going to have an act gun confiscation. See, think about it. This shooting that just recently happened in Aurora, Illinois, where this individual was able to acquire a firearm, a Smith & Wesson 40 caliber handgun. He killed five individuals, wounded five or six police officers. But now the truth comes out, and this is why the left is not talking about it anymore, because he should not have had that firearm. See, the individual that shot those people there in Aurora, Illinois, at that plant, and he was killed himself. Well, see, this individual had prior arrests, violent arrests. And when he filled out his Form 4473, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, in, I think, 2014 to get this firearm, if law enforcement or if the government had done its job, he would have been flagged. And that federal firearms licensee that sold him that weapon, he would have said, sorry, sir, you've been denied. When I'm told him why or anything, just said, you've been denied. Go have a nice day. But for whatever reason, the federal government did not update his data and he was able to acquire that firearm. That was failure number one. Failure number two came when he went to get his concealed carry license. And anytime you go through the concealed carry license class, and you know, I know this because I've gone through that in Florida and also in Texas. I don't think Nancy Pelosi and any of these other chuckleheads have, Michael Bloomberg, because they don't need to. They just hire people to secure them. But you have to get your fingers fingerprinted. And in getting the fingerprint, well, it should have popped up that this guy had those prior arrests, which would have precluded him from getting a concealed carry license. And therefore, the confiscation of a firearm is lawful, authorized. So it's the same as with Nicholas Cruz. You remember him, the young man that shot up Parkland High School just a year ago? The FBI, the Briar Sheriff's Office, they had plenty of warnings about it. They did not heed any of it. You don't need to have these red flag laws. You could have Baker acted Nicholas Cruz and taken away his weapons. But see, what is happening is that there's these failures, but yet we had Nancy Pelosi saying that a new Democrat president will, well, they'll institute a national emergency against gun violence. Because that's what the left always do, does. They, they, they rush to judgment before they get all of the information, all of the data, all of the facts, because everything for them is based upon their ideological agenda. And also remember what happened here in Texas at the Sutherland Springs First Baptist Church. The person that killed all of those innocent individuals, they're just going to Sunday morning church services. He also had had an other than honorable discharge from the United States Air Force. That's one of the questions 
on this BATF form 4473. He had also been convicted of a domestic violence crime. That's another question on 4473. So how is it that this individual was able to acquire a semi-automatic rifle, an AR-15, when he had those two red flags? See, we don't need new laws. We have laws all around the table. We don't need a Democrat president, and they've tipped their hand, folks. This is all about disarming us, we the people, legal, law-abiding American citizens. Because once they disarm us, then they're able to institute and coerce, further intimidate, mandate and enact violence against us because we're no longer citizens, we're subjects. Look at what has happened in Venezuela. Look at all the dictatorships of the 20th century. Disarming the people is always the first step. And so here we are. Thank you, Nancy Pelosi. You were the recipient of our Stuck on Stupid Saturday Award because of exactly what you said. You stood up there as the Speaker of the House and said that a Democrat president could and would, or now has an established president to enact a national emergency on gun violence. So you're going to tell me and all the millions of other legal law-abiding gun owners here in the United States of America that we're wrong because of what someone else did, even if it comes as a failure of the government to properly secure and keep us safe because they're not updating these roles and these backgrounds. We don't need universal background checks. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because universal background checks, you know what that means? Gun registration. So that they know whose door to knock on and what you have. So I do not agree with red flag laws. And I disagree with these very weak Republican governors that are allowing these things to take place. We have laws on our books. What we do need to do is clean up those information rules so that we don't have criminals to include criminal illegal immigrants being able to get firearms. And that leads me to another point that I want to talk about how the left always just rushes in without getting all the facts. You notice how now they're not talking about this Jesse Smollett case anymore. It's just kind of going hush hush. Did you see the video when they uh, asked uh, Senator Kamala Harris from California about would she like to, you know, change her statement, you know, about this is, you know, a, a new lynching and everything? Ask yourself, who is going to be out in Chicago at 2 o'clock in the morning? The temperature is 10 degrees. Probably wind chill is, you know, 20 below. Walk around with a thing of bleach and a noose and a red Make America Great hat. They're going to walk up to someone that they know can identify, call them out by name, call them out by the show that they're on, put a noose around their neck and try to throw bleach on. First of all, I think the bleach will freeze as soon as you try to pour it out. Give me a break. We all knew that this whole thing sounded real fishy, but because we have to sit back and kind of be, well, let's say it, timid, because if you question anything from the left, they will come at you like, well, banshees. But now we find out pretty much so that this was all just a hoax. And you know it's a hoax because Mr. Smollett has lawyered up. He's gotten a crisis management PR firm. But where are all those voices that were talking about how horrible this is? As a matter of fact, there was a woman who wrote an op-ed piece Monday for the Washington Post. Her name is Na uh, Nana Ifua Mumford. And in her op-ed piece for the Washington Post on the editorial page, she said that, well, she was disappointed because she so wanted this to be true. Because now, guess what? we will be able to discard things as just left-wing conspiracies. Well, we have every right to do that, Ms. Mumford. Christine Blasey Ford, Deborah Ramirez, Julie Swetnick. Don't forget what happened to the kids at Covington Catholic High School. And did you see where one of those kids is bringing forth a lawsuit? $250 million. <laughs> He's got his college paid for. And it deserves a ride. 
Because at some point in time, we have to hold these progressive socialists accountable. And they have to be consequences for all of these things that they do, wrongfully slow. So they cannot continue to accuse people and try to demonize people all because they want to prove a point that a certain president or his followers are racist homophobes, Islamophobes, you name it, sexist. And they continue to go back to this tactic of, well, lies, deceit, and creating false narratives, fake news. So the choice is very clear for us. You know, back some time ago, there was a young millennial by the name of William Barrett Travis. He drew a line in the sand. This is a line in the sand moment for the United States of America. A former U.S. Senator and a former Vice President stood before a gallant audience last week in Munich, Germany. And before a bunch of foreign faces, a former U.S. Senator, a former Vice President of the United States of America, someone that potentially could run for President again, Joe Biden, said America is an embarrassment. The only thing embarrassing about America right now is that we have progressive socialism that has taken a foothold in our country. Tomorrow, I have a story on theoldschoolpatriot.com that I hope, hopefully you'll enjoy, but it will also alert you. It's a story about Syracuse University and how Syracuse University is supporting fascism they're at Syracuse University. They have made the statement that supporting the Constitution of the United States of America is discriminatory. The line in the sand has been drawn. Which side will you stand on? With that being said, what are your questions? All right, Chris Constantino. Hi, Alan from Florida. Hey, man, what's going on? Priscilla K. Green, run for Senate in Texas. Well, I think uh, Mr. Cornyn might have a little something to say about that. We'll see how that shakes out. Hey, my good friend, Petrina Stoskoff, good. I hope they get every penny. And yes, I think that young man will get that $250 million. Uh, Judith LeCase, deplorable in Ohio. In Idaho, I'm sorry, Judith, uh, be careful. There are a lot of Californians now have got their eye on your state. Idaho, they're moving there. There was recently an article that talked about how, well, you know, since everything is kind of going south in New York, and I wrote a piece about that, how Mayor Cuomo went begging to President Trump to, re you know, to lift the, uh, the ban on the, the state and local tax deduction because he wants to tax the rich, but just not his rich because he needs to soak the rich in New York. Well, New York is bleeding population. I think uh, recently it was like 180,000. And on top of that, they have a two, two and a half billion dollar budget shortfall. But there was an article on Fox News that talked about how people are realizing that New Yorkers are fleeing, coming out of you know New York down I-95, and they're telling people don't bring their craziness with them. You see, that's why this book is important, because this book talks about how vital Texas is and the blueprint from the progressive socialist left out here has been coming from California. They've overrun Nevada. They've overrun Arizona. I was just in Colorado this past weekend. They've overrun New Mexico. They got their eyes on Idaho, and now they got their eyes here on Texas. Robert Francis O'Rourke, yeah, old Bob, and Julian Castro, far leftists. One wants to run for president. The other may run for Senate again against John Cornyn. He may stick around and try to be a vice presidential candidate, but the fact is, Socialism is now gained a foothold in the incredible Lone Star State of Texas. Line's been drawn, folks. Which side are you on? Okay, Mark Allen, good to hear from you. Thanks so much, Mark. Bruce Berner, Joe Biden is an embarrassment. I tend to agree with you. Uh, Catherine Spellman, not the orange. Yes, you'll read about it tomorrow. Syracuse University has made the declaration that Students supporting the Constitution 
that is an act of discrimination because the Constitution is non-inclusive. I don't make this stuff up, folks. You'll read about it tomorrow on theoldschoolpatriot.com. Hey, Chris Rayburn. Hi, Alan, from your home state of Georgia. Hey, man, uh, we're looking at setting up a book tour. Might be coming down to the uh, my own home state. And I see you got that Georgia Bulldog there, Chris. So uh, go dogs. Only time I don't root for the dogs when they play on my Tennessee Volunteers. And look, to all you people out there in Big Blue Kentucky Nation, you spanked us. You took us to the woodshed. I'm going to give you your props. But I'm kind of glad you did because maybe that'll wake up my Tennessee Volunteers because you want to have momentum going into March Madness time frame. And folks, I love March Madness. All right. Peter Kehew, K-E-H-E-W. Will we ever see justice and finally charge Hillary, Obama, and Comey and the rest? Hey, look, that's one of the things. These people continue to uh, show themselves to be corrupt. I mean, think about the fact Andrew McCabe, a guy who was fired for lying under oath, he's out there, you know, all over the news. He's out there telling people that he's some kind of hero because he was going to take down the president with the 25th Amendment. On what basis? Andrew McCabe should be in jail, right with Paul Manafort and everybody else. But I don't see, you know, 17 police cars, helicopters, 50 guys dressed up in, you know, black with semi-automatic rifles and flat vests coming to Andrew McCabe's house like they did Roger Stone. This is what happens, folks. Go back and read about East Germany and the, the Stasi. This secret deep state police state is here. A lot has been drawn in the sand. Which side will you stand on? And remember, if Nancy Pelosi gets her way, she continues to be the Speaker of the House, and you get a Democrat president. Got a pen on the phone. I will enact a national emergency on gun violence. In other words, I will enact a national emergency to disarm law abiding legal gun owners. Antonine Patton, True Texas, you got it. Uh, Lynn Lindstrom, I'm saddened beyond words how this country has been going. My fa own family is fit. I will do all I can. We got to. I know that so often people say you can't talk about certain things, you know, at the dinner table, politics, sex, and religion. You got to talk about your country, though. You got to talk about saving this constitutional republic. Don't let the other side force you into self-censoring. They're the real fascists. Because they yell and they scream, they tell you shut up, they don't want to hear it, you're stupid, whatever. They're the ones that cannot defend the things that they believe in. But I will give it to the progressive socialist left. They're tenacious fighters. They will, they will go to the mat for everything that is wrong. And we back away when they start frothing at the mouth and, and getting crazy and the eyes bug out. You ever notice Cory Booker's eyes? That guy got some strange eyes. I'm not, I don't want to be president just because of those strange eyes. And you know what? He better be happy that Kirk Douglas done, you know, come up there and slap him for, you know, calling himself Spartacus. Kirk Douglas was Spartacus, man. Thank you for your service and you, all you continue to do. Hey, that's, that's what it's all about. John Wittendorf, Carl West, Iron First veteran. Here too bad all those politicians aren't subject to UCMJ. Hey, John, you're absolutely right. It's, it's amazing to me that you know, we're held to a higher standard in the military than our own elected officials are. And also, John, I just want to let you know, I'll see you at the 101st Airborne Division reunion out in Colorado Springs this summer. Looking forward to seeing you. Bobby Hodges, why isn't anyone going to jail? Two reasons why no one is going to jail. The media is complicit. We're putting out a false narrative and Republicans, they're just too scared. I hate to say it, but you know, we got to get some dog fighting mad Republicans up there. Got too many cowards. They do a lot of talking, talk about hearings, talk about referring things, and then nothing happens. And the left continues to do the exact same thing. Andrew McKay should be in jail. We don't hear about Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, Bruce and Nellie Orr. We don't hear about Christopher Steele, Fusion GPS, Susan Rice, Samantha Power. Why is the ambassador to the United Nations unmasking American citizens. Yeah, she's free out there walking around. She's probably going to come up with a book, too. Amazing, isn't it? That we have a young Texan like 
First Lieutenant Clint Lawrence, who's sitting in prison. You have Major Matt Goldstein, decorated Green Beret officer, killed bad guys, and now they're looking at imprisoning him. You have Bo Bergdahl and Bradley Manning out there walking free. Oh, that's right. Facebook may censor me because I said Bradley Manning, but I want the folks at Facebook that are watching this to know something. Bradley Manning was the one that divulged secrets. Bradley Manning was charged. Bradley Manning was tried. Bradley Manning was sentenced. Bradley Manning was in prison. I don't know who this other person is. I just know who Bradley Manning is. And Bradley Manning is free. While we're while real warriors that face the enemy, they're being in prison. A traitor, a deserter, cowards walking free, the young men that we send into combat zones to do what they're supposed to do, they get in prison. There's a line in the sand that's been drawn. Which side are you on? Uh, Violet Peter Olivencia. Hi, Alan, from Westchester County, New York. Hey, Westchester County, New York. That's the home of Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez. She's not some poor struggling bartender. She's from Westchester County, New York. That's a pretty ritzy place, man. I don't think they allow me to live in Westchester County, New York. <laughs> She's the gift that keeps on giving. <clears throat> oh, and speaking of which, City of Stockton, California, is now going to start test casing universal basic income. Yeah, we're going to give people money. You know, those people that are unwilling or unable to work, but mainly unwilling to work, we're just going to give them money. $500 a month. That's socialism, man. From each according to their ability to each according to their need. And guess who decides and defines what is an ability and what is a need? The progressive socialists. Line in the sand. Uh, let's see, Brandon Altus. Why are Republicans so weak and gutless? I don't know. I don't know why they won't stand up and fight. See, the leftists are true believers. True believers are something that's totally wrong, something that does not work. All you got to do is look at Venezuela. And then they'll try to tell you, well, that's not real socialism. Well, there's only one style of socialism. It's wealth redistribution. It's nationalizing economic production. It's creating and expanding a welfare dependency state. It is social egalitarianism and secular humanism. That's socialism. You can study from Karl Marx, Frederick Engels, all the way to today. There's no different iterations of it. But... I just don't get why our guys won't stand up and fight against it. But when you read that story about what's going on at Syracuse University, we got some young people, young conservatives that are fighting and we need to support them because they're the future. They don't want to be, you know, lopped in with all the rest of these individuals on college campuses and universities. Uh, Casey Campbell, how about the abortion situation? It's not an abortion situation, Casey. It's infanticide. Always remember that what Governor Cuomo in New York signed into law is basically the exact same reason why Dr. Kermit Gosnell of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, is doing a life sentence because of how he killed, murdered three babies. You notice you don't hear anything about Governor Northam anymore and what's going on in Virginia? See, I told you. The Democrats came out and they were running their mouths. He needs to step down, whatever. It was all wink, wink. Hey, 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 Ralphie, just hang on, man. This thing, it'll die out through the news cycle. Just stay on in there. Don't worry about it. You don't hear anything about him anymore. Was I more upset about the blackface thing than the comments that Governor Northam made on WTOP? I'm more upset about the comments that he made on WTOP. Because I cannot understand how anyone would elect a person that supports infanticide. But remember, Margaret Sanger, founder of Planned Parenthood, white supremacist, racist, spoke at Ku Klux Klan rallies, called people to look like me undesirables and weeds. They always get away with it because we don't push the issue. There's a line in the sand that's being drawn. 
Okay, uh, Kevin Taggarty, budget. Why does nobody care about the budget on either side? Why do they not care about the budget? Because it's all about government control. Remember the essence of the discussion in the United States of America, people, it is no longer about Republican or Democrat. It's about how do you see the relationship between the individual American citizen and the institution of government. And if you understand how it's supposed to be, the individual and their sovereignty is supposed to be above that of the government, the institution thereof. But now we have people, they're reversing that. You can be a progressive. You can believe in a big government, massive government spending programs. It doesn't matter about R&D. It matters is your understanding of that relationship. Individual sovereignty is above the institution of government. But we've gone in reverse here in the United States of America. So none of them care because they want to continue based upon their own self-interest or special interests. They want to concentrate the power over you, the individual citizen in Washington, D.C. See, that's why I'm going to speak in Jackson, Mississippi. I'll be there Thursday about Convention of States. Federalism people, remember Article 9, Article 10, I mean, the, the, the Ninth and Tenth Amendments, I'm sorry, Ninth and Tenth Amendments of our Constitution. All those powers that are not enumerated to the federal government, they go to who? The states and to the individual citizen. We got to get that balance back right. Balanced budget amendment, that's one of the key issues that the Article 5 Convention of States should tackle. And remember that with 34 of our 50 states, legislatures all together, they can make a recommendation. They can submit legislation for a constitutional amendment. If you get 38 of our 50 states together, they can amend the constitution. But the first thing is that we got to get control of these state houses. That's why the Democrats are busy in many red states trying to flip as many state houses, state senate seats as they can. I know because I saw it happen last November right here in the state of Texas. Because they're flooding into the major population centers and that is where they're starting their attack. They're not worried about out there, first and foremost in the rural areas, they're starting in the major population centers. And be very careful. Redistricting is coming up in 2021. If a state like Texas picks up some new uh, congressional districts or Georgia or Tennessee or Florida because all of the mass migration that come from these failing blue states and all of a sudden those new districts are drawn in the urban population centers where you see in the growth and the expansion like here in the Dallas Fort Worth area, who will you see end up being those state house, state senate congressional representatives? So important. All right, last couple of questions. Uh, John Blanton, do you support a convention of states? Article five is there for a reason? Yes, I do. I, I, maybe you just checked on uh, John, but I do support convention of states. I've been one of the early supporters. Uh, there was a video that I just did uh, last week, I believe, or a week before with the convention of states people. And I'll be speaking in Jackson, Mississippi, and I'll be talking to some of the uh, state house and state senators there to include the lieutenant governor. Every person that believes in federalism, every person that believes in our constitution, every person that believes in the freedom and the liberties thereof and the strength of the ninth and 10th amendments, you should be supporting Article 5 convention of states. Absolutely. All right, Violet Parish. The Umbra. Public education needs an overhaul. Kids are being indoctrinated by the radical left. Violet, you could not have said anything better, and you could not have given me a better point by which I'll conclude this Facebook Live. Understand this, that the most important elected position in the United States of America is not president, it's not senator, it's not congressman, it's not governor, school board. And when we see these progressive socialist leftists move into red states, two things they run for, city council, school board. And then you ask yourself what's happening in your state, in your city, in your local area. Last year, the Texas State Board of Education had to have a special hearing 
because someone, some genius came up with the idea to remove the reference heroic from characterizing the defenders of the Alamo. I shared the story about the high school French teacher in Virginia that did not call a young female student by her preferred pronoun. The school board there voted unanimously for him to be fired. Not a bad teacher. He just didn't go along with the ideological agenda. In New Jersey, they are now mandating that LGBT history be taught to students in public schools. Same kids that don't know a doggone thing about American history or the Constitution. But they're going to learn everything about LGBT history. School board is most important because our kids are being indoctrinated. Tomorrow, you'll read the story about what happened at Syracuse University on the old school patriot.com. A line in the sand has been drawn. Which side of the line will you stand on? The line of tyranny, progressive socialism, or the line of freedom and liberty for this constitutional republic? It's the last time I'll be doing a Facebook Live from our house here in North Lake Highlands in Dallas, Texas. In two weeks, I'll be doing a Facebook Live from our new house in Garland, Texas. I look forward to seeing you then. God bless you all. God bless these great United States of America. Have a great night.